morning, guys. This is Jay Craft again with the Facebook group Bowler Out Pickers Lounge coming at you again with another Small Questions, Big Answers, where we take your very simple questions in nature and we give you the full answer, maybe a little bit more than what you're going to find just within a normal Facebook group. So without further ado, let's take a look at this week's question coming in from Dan Gunther. Uh, he's inside of another eBay uh, helpers group. And the question that I see in here is, this scam is getting sold. Started 10 years ago and people think they can get away with it. I already replied with the package weight and whatnot, but it overwhelms me the time I put into people trying to take my rent money away. The message is, hi, I received my package yesterday, but it was empty. And all I had was the envelope with nothing inside. I was not sure if maybe this was mailed in error. So when it comes to dealing with situations like this, the more information you can gather, the better. Uh, first thing first, I would suggest reaching out to the customer and trying to get uh, images of exactly what they received. So you want to see if there's any type of damage to the exterior of the package or if the package has been altered in any way. Uh, you know, there, there is the very real possibility that this package did get damaged before it got there. But I do want to note real quick, though, that when a package is damaged and the contents are clearly not uh, not where they're supposed to be, they've fallen out and it's, it's very visible that something was supposed to be there, you'll usually see a note included from your postmaster stating that the package was damaged during delivery. Now, if this was an item that was sent out via USPS and you sent it priority, it should come with some bundled in for, uh, insurance unless you sent it out, uh, you know, parcel select, or if you sent it out USPS uh, first class, uh, you can have a little bit of issues with that. Now, beyond that, uh, once you have gathered that information, from the buyer and, and maybe you're of the impression that you might be being scammed. Maybe it appears as if though they've gutted the package and they're simply trying to get one over on you. You kind of want to dig a little bit deeper. You want to get some more details as to exactly what's going on. But I, I can't st stress this enough. Please try and go into these situations with an open mind and, and please try to assume the best of people that you're working with. Uh, you're going to want to look back into the details of the buyer at this point. I would look at the feedback that they've received as a buyer, and I would look uh, as the feedback that they've received uh, from other sellers to them. See if there's anything suspicious. Check for some anomalies. What we're looking for is we're looking for patterns of bad behavior, uh, you know, a history of leaving negative feedback, a history of leaving feedback talking about resolutions, you know, like uh, this, you know, the, the seller was quickly able to fix a problem and the, the seller made things right with me. You're looking for patterns that are very inconsistent with somebody that is having a normal experience on eBay. If you see a whole bunch of negatives on the account, they've just been leaving negatives for people as well, that's gonna give you a red flag. You also wanna look into uh, the overall feedback of the buyer too. If they only have a handful of feedback, that isn't an end all be all uh, to the situation, but it certainly is an additional indicator that you might be dealing with a scammer, you might be dealing with somebody that's uh, trying to get one over on you or trying to get one over on multiple sellers on eBay as well. Now then the next part, you can take it just a little bit further than that. This is what I recommend for everyone when they're doing their research into the problem that they're having is that they go ahead and get onto Facebook, they get onto Instagram and they punch in that first and last name and they try and locate the actual person that they're doing business with. And I know this is gonna sound uh, r ridiculous, but I have actually caught people lying, uh, you know, and I've worked in situations where we've trapped kids, 14 year old kids who have been scamming people online and uh, basically getting, you know, getting their mother on the phone and having the mother go through the process of return shipping these products back to people. So I've seen it all. So get online, see if you can dig up some evidence that might indicate to you that you're dealing with a less than savory individual. Uh, beyond that, it's always important to make sure that you get eBay involved at the first inclination that there's a problem going on. Uh, you know, you wanna give them a call and before a case is even opened, you wanna let them know like, hey, this is a situation that I'm dealing with. And then if you have to, if you absolutely have to and you've done everything correctly, you're going to do what, you, what you're going to need to get done to try and get this to be closed out in your favor. Because you, at this point, you're pretty much going to be expecting a case is going to be open against you and that you're going to be out the item and you're going to be out the money. This is the trifecta of bad things that could possibly happen. But in all reality, if you can get a case closed in your favor... Okay, that means you're ineligible to be getting a negative feedback. How can these cases be closed in your favor? Well, if a buyer opens up a case and says that the item was never received, 
as opposed to an item not as described. So if they say item was never to, uh, received, you simply call eBay and say, hey, here's the tracking number for the item, confirm delivery, done. And then that case will get closed out in your favor and they're simply not gonna be able to use that tactic any longer. And then uh, if all of these these methods don't really work for you. We do have a very much so accelerated, very aggressive approach that I take within my brand and I let the customer know if I truly do believe that I am being scammed, if I truly do believe somebody's trying to pull the wool over my eyes, let's say we're looking at a situation where a customer returns the wrong item to me. And, and you know, having the wrong item in your hand is pretty much the same type of uh, sour feeling that you're going to get as if though you shipped out an item and they claim they never got it, especially if you're good at packing items like I am myself. I know when an item is a questionable one and when it may not make it, and I know that sounds horrible. Sometimes it's the difference between 10 or $15 worth of shipping, depending on how it goes. But when I have those types of situations and I, and I feel I've done everything correctly, sometimes you have to be more aggressive. You have to let them know you know, I've been doing this for quite a long time. We take online fraud very, very seriously. All the indicators are here that something isn't right. Uh, you know, you failed to provide pictures for us. Uh, you failed to back up your claims on your end. We're going to go ahead and open up an IC3 investigation with the FBI. And this is the direction that you have to go sometimes. I've opened up a few myself when I've been able to concretely prove that someone is actually trying to pull a scam on me. And for those of you who don't know, an IC3 is just basically uh, you're, you're opening a report for online or internet sales fraud of some variety against an individual. And I'll tell you right now, just the open-ended threat of an IC3 investigation, you make sure you specify it's with the FBI, is generally enough to make someone back off and, and say something to the effect of, you know what, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. I don't want to deal with all the trouble, yada, 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 and they'll back off. But I must stress this. Please don't go this direction unless you have a very high level of credibility that, uh, that what you're doing is correct. And then you're not simply uh, using your power to try and put somebody out of an item that they did actually pay for. So I hope this sheds a little bit of clarity. Uh, you know, beyond that, just try and get in touch with the post office. Maybe let them know too about the item that is missing and see if it did turn up at one of the actual substations. Um, you know, but sometimes things do happen. Sometimes items do get lost. Uh, sometimes packages, you know, will make it to their destination empty. And it's important to make sure you use a little bit of common sense when dealing with buyers because the platform as a whole depends on a great shopping experience for both the buyer and the seller. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this episode, guys. If you, got, if you have any questions, guys, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. If you know somebody that's dealing with the same issue, send them our direction. And then also we got some great links down below where you can join our Facebook group, learn a little bit more about who we are and what we do. And then we also have a live show that we do on Sunday every week here on YouTube, five o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And you can ask your questions live on the air as well as get informed about all the news that's going on here within the world of e-commerce. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch, guys. I look forward to seeing you next week.